TLO, what's pop? We are on kick, K-I-C-K dot com. We are not live, but you can leave a like and comment. Subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, this channel behind me is if we do go live and you happen to miss any of the... Or you have it and you want to see any highlights and things of that nature. Well, I got two videos to upload to here too. Dang. Uh, also, got the Patreon. Just uploaded Sherlock last night. Almost finished with that. Upload five days a week, no weekends. Don't forget, we got merch. Had to clean my shirt, so I don't got it on today. But you know, the link to all of this is down below in the description. I have a link down there. It's called Linktree Click It. It brings you to all my socials and any other stuff. This is the disturbing channel. I know I, I don't know why I subject myself to this, but salute to them. The horrific case of Iman Nasir. Okay. Seventeen-year-old Iman. This case takes place in the United Kingdom on the fourth of May, twenty nineteen. 17-year-old Iman was born and raised in the Greater Manchester area in the shadow of the Manchester. famous Manchester football stadium. She lived with her mother, two sisters and brother and spent plenty of time with her grandparents who lived nearby. The family were all followers of Islam and they worshipped at the local mosque. Iman was bright. She excelled both at school and in social situations. She had no trouble making friends and was a devoted sister to her siblings. Okay, okay, okay. Smart in school, so book smart and social, I guess. We can, she looked, grew up in Manchester. I wouldn't be surprised if she was street smart. That's smart, okay. In fact, she loved children so much that she told her mother that her dream was to become a midwife. At the time, there was nothing to indicate that a man wouldn't achieve whatever she set her mind to. But, whilst attending high school at Manchester Academy, she met a boy named Rhett Hattie Shaw. Uh. He looked like trouble. Anybody who wear their hair like this? The Minister Society. After that fateful meeting, Iman's life began to change, and not for the better. At first, he presented himself as a bit of a gentleman. He adored Iman and was protective and caring. But soon, that protectiveness turned into control, and those adoring words became critical and demanding. Her friends would often mention that they had seen him out with other girls, but when she confronted him, he would become violent and deny that anything was happening. After a while, Iman stopped saying anything, fearful that she would upset Rhett. It was around this time that Iman's family noticed a change in her as well. Where she was once the centre of her friend group, she now seemed to be isolated, and when she wasn't with Rhett, she was all alone. Despite these changes, Iman... That's the number one way to control, man. Isolate your... Uh, isolate them. Isolate your significant other. Take them away from the friend group. And, uh... And, like, like make them feel like... Hey, if you do anything, I'ma leave. I've seen that many, many of times. For males... I've seen males do it and females do it. Man finished high school with good grades and began to prepare herself for college. With like another that. year of maturity, she realized that Rhett was no good for her, and she decided that she was done with his controlling and unpredictable behavior. She wanted college to be a new start, and that meant getting rid of old baggage. But her plans were short-lived, when just a few weeks after separating from her high school sweetheart, she found out that she was pregnant to him. At the time, she was no. just 16. You gotta use a uh, you gotta wrap it up. A teenage pregnancy was far outside of the hopes and dreams Iman's family held for her. In fact, because of her culture, she had already been promised to another man. But Iman did not want to go along with this arranged marriage. In part, because this man was 13 years older than her. But in her culture, she had little say in the matter. I ain't even gonna say nothing about no cultural things, but that's kinda... She's 16, she, he's 13 years older, that's like, that's wild, but okay. However, her pregnancy did change that. Initially, Iman's mother was devastated by the realization that her daughter had fallen so short of her expectations. 
But with time she came round to the idea, and she told Iman that she would support her the best she could. The same couldn't be said about Rhett. Despite being separated, he initially seemed excited to be having a child. As if anything, the idea of having a child offered a new hope to the couple, and they agreed they would work through their differences. A child is not a band-aid, and ever. To be positive parents for their child. But the reignited flame was short burning. Once again, a man's friends messaged her to say that they had seen Rhett out with other women while she was at home studying or resting, leaving a man to face the challenges of pregnancy on her own. What she didn't know, that right around the time when she found out she was having Rhett's child, he had begun seeing somebody else. Sarah Mohammed was a fellow student from the high school Rhett and Iman attended, and she had her eyes set on Rhett from the minute they met, and she wasn't about to let anything or anyone get- No offense, she looked like a homewrecker. Hair is way too curly. <laughs> Just play it, my bad. It's in the way of what she wanted. I be looking at red flags, like, for real though, like, don't, don't, this don't scream home record to you? God. When Rhett found out Iman was pregnant, he became more distant, and rather than support the mother of his child, he spent his time wooing the new girl in his life. When Iman confronted Rhett about Sarah, he admitted that he was seeing her, and that he would tell her about Iman and the baby once their child was born. Once again, that's the, that's the, and she took that to the chin? That's, she confronted you and then he said, I'll tell her about you and the baby once the baby's here. What? Iman agreed to try and work on their relationship for the good of their child. In May of 2019, Iman gave birth to a healthy baby boy named Keenan. As you can already imagine, Rhett did not attend the birth. The arrival of their child changed everything. Sarah had been intensely jealous of Iman's relationship with Rhett even back when they were at school, but her jealousy turned into a violent rage when she found out that they were still an item. And then when she found out that they had a baby together, her emotions spiralled into a toxic storm of envy and resentment. On the 3rd of May 2019, Sarah told Rhett that their relationship was over. She told him that the trust was gone and that he had let her down in the worst way possible. Rhett begged Sarah to change her mind and he promised that he would never see a man again. Initially, Sarah- I would never, man. It's like putting a female before your kid. Cause that's essentially what's going on. Sarah refused to change her mind, but then she offered him a choice. She told Rhett that there was something he could do to save their relationship, cut him on out of his life once and for all. And she didn't mean figuratively. The following day on the 4th of May, 29. Wait, so the ultimatum was to take her out like to Emma, like, Unalive her? What about the bit? Teen, Rhett, no. Are teenagers' minds really this impressionable? Like, really? Are they? Are teenagers really this dumb? Him and Sarah, dumb. <laughs> Iman just trying to live her life. She's a hopeless, you know. She's a hopeless romantic. She wants to, to work, but. You know, ain't no story to, ain't no, ain't no fair, ain't no happy endings out here. Not when the story starts like this. Knocked on Iman's door. Iman answered the door to find Rhett standing there holding a green bag. No one else was at home and after a few minutes chatting about the baby, they went upstairs and slept together. Almost immediately after they were done, the atmosphere in the room changed. Rhett told a man that he had come over to her house to kill her. He told her that if he didn't, then people would harm his family, unless she took her own life instead. Rhett pulled out his mobile phone and told a man that he needed to record her dying so that the people making him do it would know that it was real. A man was stunned and couldn't tell if he was joking. Then Rhett suggested something. He told a man that if she put on makeup around her neck to make it look like she had been strangled, then maybe they could both get out of this alive. A man agreed, and she used makeup to make it look like her neck was bruised. 
Yo, I'm not even going to lie. Red, what's his name? Like, either he's one of the best liars on earth. Or I don't want to come at a man, but, like, I know she's young and impressionable. But, like, that's naive to even, like, what's going She laid down on her bed and closed her eyes so Rhett could take a photograph of her. But when she opened her eyes, Rhett was standing above her with a knife in his hands. She tried to reach for her phone to call for help, but Rhett kicked it away from her. A man began screaming and kicking, and she managed to land enough blows to push Rhett off of the bed. But he was still blocking her escape. A man used every last bit of energy she had to push him backwards towards the door, and with one final surge, she managed to push him down the stairs. But Where was the baby? But by the time she came down the stairs behind him to escape, he was back on his feet. He chased her out of the back door and into the garden, and that's when the bloodshed began. Using the knife, Rhett rained down blow after blow into a man's head, face, neck, and back. A man had no fight left in her. She collapsed onto the ground with blood seeping from her wounds. Within moments, she lost consciousness. Rhett calmly and, walked and back. Rhett, like, what did you think? This is what, 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 like, what outcome? Like, you thought she was gonna get away with it? Through the house, picked up his bag, and left through the front door. He walked into Sarah's house and cleaned himself up using Dettol wipes and changed into a new set of clothing. Shortly after this attack, one of a man's siblings came home and found her lying in a pool of blood in the back garden. She called for an ambulance and a man was taken to hospital to receive treatment. Remarkably, she was still alive. She uh, survived. Salute. Okay. Okay. In the moments before she was taken in for surgery, she was able to identify her attacker as Rhett. Within hours, a warrant was issued for Rhett's arrest. The police apprehended him as he walked down a street close to Sarah's address. He was carrying two plastic bags which contained his bloody clothing and- Oh, he was caught red-handed, essentially. And no, like, he might have got away with that, even if she, like, said something. Like, she identified him, but it was gonna be tough getting out of that just with that. But, like, you walking down the street all jolly with the clothes. The knife he had used in the attack. When officers and, looked at his phone, they quickly... And the weapon? ...he realized that Rhett hadn't carried out this violent attack on his own. Whilst he had been the one to go into a man's home and stab her, his text messages indicated that somebody else was involved. There were more than 50 messages. I'm not going to reflect. She looked crazy to me. Is, is her eyes two different colors? Like this is red flag. Like this is like, she looked toxic. Between Rhett and Sarah from that day alone. In one message, Sarah said, hurry up and do it. Video it, then delete it when I see it, please. The police then saw that around the time when Rhett was leaving a man's house, he sent a message saying, I did it to prove that I love you. There was no other way to keep you. Sarah then replied saying, I know there wasn't. I'm going to protect you at all costs. Investigators then found that Sarah had been seen loitering around Iman's neighborhood all day to keep an eye on the home. When the coast was clear, she texted Rhett that he needed to do what had to be done. And she reminded him that he better not forget to film it to prove he had done what she asked. She said if there was no proof, then she would never take him back. Sarah was arrested. She wanted sit like Sarah should get more of the charge. I ain't even gonna lie. Arrested the same day as Rhett. Unsurprisingly, they both attempted to minimalize their roles in the attack and began to blame each other. Sarah claimed that she believed Rhett was just going to see a man to break up with her and that she wanted him to film it as proof. She claimed that she never expected Rhett to harm a man. Meanwhile, Rhett claimed that he had been made to attack a man when all he really wanted to do was just talk to her. Their text messages, however, told a different story. In one minute, a digital footprint crazy. 
message, Sarah told Rhett not to do anything stupid, like leaving his DNA behind at the scene of the crime. He had intercourse with her. He did more than leave it behind. In another, she asked him, did you get rid of the phone? Rhett's internet search history provided further insight into his intentions too. Just one day before the attack, he googled asphyxiation and how long do people get sentenced for murder? I'm running the biggest- Well, no VPN, nothing, that's- I mean, good, I'm glad they got caught, nah. People do crazy stuff for love, but this is like- At the hospital, yeah. the doctors did everything- Iman's an innocent girl who got your kid, man, that you ain't getting no hood, you ain't getting no type of points from nobody from that, for like, that's- that's P-U-S-S-Y. <laughs> I think they could to save a man. And thankfully, they were able to do so. They got her into a stable condition despite her horrific injuries. Rhett was charged with attempted murder. He was sentenced to 16 years in jail. Sarah was charged with intentionally encouraging or assisting a person to commit murder. She was found guilty too and was sentenced to 16 years in prison. I'm glad she got the, at least she got the uh, equal. She has since changed her name to Cairo Mori Akihiro. In the sentencing remarks, the judge noted, you are both selfish narcissists. Overly narcissistic, especially her. Who believe that the world revolves all around you. Whilst a man did make a full recovery from the attack, she continues to suffer from the psychological and emotional trauma it caused. She has said, That's four years ago, ain't that? She's 21, huh? This incident has dramatically Salute. changed my life and the outlook of living. I can't do things I want to do anymore because I'm too scared. I'm scared that someone is going to come after me and finish off the job that Rhett and Sarah both started. I don't trust anyone, as if Rhett the person I loved can do that to me, then anyone can. It he ain't love you though, man. It's sad that this is what you had to run into at 16, 17, and, and, and this, is the, this is the idea that's imprinted on your brain of love. That's not really how it is. It's hard for me to move on because I have his child and I worry that my son will grow up like his dad and be violent. Sometimes I wake up sweating and screaming in my sleep. I find it hard to breathe because I'm so traumatized. I suffer with headaches that just won't go away. Nighttime is especially hard for me as I am alone with my thoughts and they overpower me. I'm taking baby steps to get my life together this is something that I never thought would happen to me. That's sad, man. I'm glad she ain't, you know what I'm saying? I'm glad that he, Rhett and Sarah did not achieve the, the goal that they set out to achieve. And I'm glad that she is alive taking care of her kid. But I'm, I'm it's mad that she's going through all this PTSD. I hope she get the help and get past it. But I know it's going to be a lifetime. So... Salute, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, I'm gone.